Hey, this is Brock Amir's Embedded Systems Design. We're looking at the SPI peripheral on the MSP430. And in this video, we're gonna look at slave operation. Okay, so slave operation is, is relatively simple. Uh, <clears throat> first and foremost, when you go into the peripheral, you put it into slave mode by configuring the UCMST bit, which is the master select bit, it, as a zero. And this is actually the default value uh, out of reset. So, you know, whenever when you're in reset, it, it's in uh, slave mode. Uh, remember, the biggest thing about slave is you don't generate the clock. Okay, so you are at the mercy of the master to generate the clock and, and basically initiate communication. And so as a result, you don't have to do anything with UC SSEL. You don't have to select a clock versus M clock. You don't have to set up the bit rate uh, pre-scaler. You do, however, <clears throat> uh, or and then the clock just basically comes from the outside world. So it comes into the into the MSP430 on a pin, and it is then driven into all the shift registers and state machines that run in here. You do, however, need to set up the clock direction and phase polarity because you need to have the same settings in terms of which edge you grab information off of or transmit information off of as the master is configured. So essentially you basically need to set up all your, set up the clock system uh, to match exactly what the master did. The data framing also, you have to set up exactly what the master has done. So, you, you know, three pin versus four mode, four pin mode, uh, slave transmit enable, <clears throat> how that's used, LSB versus MSB first, eight bit versus seven bit. So you have to match the way that the master is set up. And then what happens is, let's look at transmitting first. So once you're set up, you basically just write information to the transmit buffer. And when you do that, it clears the, the transmit flag. And then you just sit there and you wait for S clock to arrive. And, and you never know when it's gonna happen. So whenever you have a peripheral that's going to kind of like sit out there and be waiting for something, you always use interrupts. So you just set it up, put the information in the transmit buffer, and then you go back to main to normal life in the main CPU program. And what happens then is that when the information is shifted in, you will then see the flag be asserted. It will trigger an interrupt, <clears throat> and then you go handle it with the interrupt service routine, and you can grab the information you know that it's been transmitted, so then you can put the next piece of information out there. So it's really, you know, you really just kind of set it up and then wait. The only thing is that you put the information in the transmit buffer. The receive is even, really, it's even more simple than that. You set up the peripheral to match how the master is set up. So that means don't you don't have to set up the clock source, but you do have to set up the clock direction, phase, and polarity. And remember, this is set up, uh, this, this clock system is the same between transmit and receive. It's just I'm drawing it in two different pictures. So this is not a separate like receive clock system. This is the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> so once you set it up uh, and you set up the framing, then all you do is wait for information. <laughs> so, so you just wait. So then you just go off and go back to the main, you know, enable interrupts, and then you go back to... You actually enable an RX uh, IFG interrupt, and then you go back to the main program and just do whatever you're doing. When the interrupt fires, you read from the receive buffer, so you grab the information and say, thank you, master. And then from then on out, you just, when you read from it, it actually clears the flag, and that's it, you're done. And so it, it's actually quite simple. <laughs> so that is really all there is to uh, configuring a spy as a slave. Uh, the only thing you need to really think about is you need to figure out how you're going to uh, win and roughly how you're going to communicate with the master, but setting up the peripheral is quite simple. Okay, that's it. Remember, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.